after a couple of nights off of doing trash cast to of course go at uh, our good friend Eric July, uh, like he always does. Ethan Van Skyver is back doing his attacks on Eric. Of course, now he tries to go get a, a pylon of Wes from Thinking Critical for Wes's pretty, uh, uh, I'd say, overly tame video uh, on your boy Zach. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> uh, what, what's notably gone from his content is uh, much about me on here. And it's because we're being very, very effective and we've got him scared. Uh, and so he knows what we've done. Uh, we've taken a major win <laughs> in a couple of ways right here. Uh, and he's he's afraid of us because our influence here is about uh, the actual comic book culture, actually changing things, building a movement that's better. Uh, and uh, it, it just highlights the grift that's been going on uh, from his channel over the last year as it's become an, uh, just full anti-Eric July meltdown. Uh, it's really funny to watch. We'll get into everything that's going on and kind of the motivation behind this because it kind of went mask off uh, in an interchange, which we'll look at in just a moment. Uh, my name is John Delarose, everybody. Please hit the like and subscribe button. I'm the most trusted name in comics news. We cover everything going on in comics culture with a focus on the culture war, of course. I would love to have you here if you're a disaffected your boy Zach fan or a disaffected comic artist Pro Secrets fan because they don't uh, actually, uh, you know, follow through with what they said they were following through back in the day. This is the spot for you. We're the real deal. Uh, we're coming out with books uh, regularly. They're high quality. They're amazing, and we're growing like mad. This is my Hidden Emperor graphic novel, uh, and I would love for you to join us not only as a subscriber here and uh, and watching our videos, but to read the comics as well. This is my twelfth graphic novel I've put out in the last few years. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver's done everything he can to try to destroy me, try to get people to not back this book, uh, even encourage some of his fans to try to get Kickstarter to take this book down. It didn't work. Um, and as you can see, we're doing better than ever. This has a real shot at getting to $50,000 uh, over the next day before it closes here. So please back this, support our channel, support great science fiction. Uh, you can read reviews of the first book, Overmind, if you go search those. Uh, people loved it. They said it was a very fun science fiction story. And that's what he doesn't want you to find. Uh, I mean, he really is scared uh, that you'll find this, see that our storytelling is next level, uh, that the writing is really good. We have good characters. We have good world building here. Uh, and it's something that, uh, you know, his books don't have because they just don't come out. Uh, we come out very regularly uh, and do it in a timely manner. That's part of what our movement's trying to do also. And building an actual alternative that comes out with regular books. I'm doing it. Eric July's doing it. Uh, and that's why uh, that's why he wants us uh, destroyed. It's really sad to watch. His grift is failing. And uh, this is part of the result. Thank you guys for checking this out. It's in the description below. If you love great science fiction, this is a, a, a quality replacement for Star Wars or Warhammer 40k as a universe. Uh, like I said, you're really going to love this. And we're uh, just getting started. Uh, I've, I'm writing a lot this month. I'm trying to get four comic scripts done uh, uh, in my uh, insane schedule. Like I said, trash cast happened last night. He's going off on, uh, on, uh, on Horseman because he's very sad that Horseman is another one uh, that's going to uh, go at uh, that. And he only really spent a light time on me because he knows that there's nothing really there at this point. Uh, all that he's got is uh, is something that builds my audience here and hurts him over there. So he spent most of his time actually going at Thinking Critical. Now, Thinking Critical meant uh, just w did this video as a response to your boy Zach. Your boy Zach attacked him pretty hard and pretty personally on his community tab as he's been spiraling at uh, good content creators. Now, Thinking Critical probably is my favorite uh comic content channel at this point. Uh, I actually like it better than mine. Uh, so you should subscribe over there if you don't. Uh, but uh, he was very tame. He said, your boy Zach's a friend. You know, we just have differences of opinion. Uh, you know, he says, I don't really worry about what people think about me. And Ethan just like, you know, went ballistic on this as he usually does. Uh, mischaracterizing everything, lying about it, even as he's got it up on his screen, getting his, uh, his people uh, out there just kind of riled up about this kind of thing. Um, and so this was a whole trash cast, really not much here going at Eric July. He, he very, very careful not to talk about Horseman too much because Horseman's a bigger success than he expected. Uh, and he, uh, he, you know, he's got egg on his face, expecting another failure. It's not working. Now he's been losing subscribers a bunch, of course, uh, that's been happening a lot as he's been going at all of his allies, attacking Eric July relentlessly. Uh, as we know, uh, yellow flash is another one myself. Uh, it's like uh, it's like he can't handle anybody doing anything if he doesn't control it. Um, and he actually laments where he's at uh, right now, which is gets very interesting. So this th interchange was brought to my attention. It says EVS makes Adam Sessler, that's the guy from G4 TV, Meltdown, 
uh, over his woke stuff uh, look better by comparison. Adam at least had the self-awareness to step away from the internet and keep his mental health intact. And yeah, that's what I think is going on here. What I think happened was I think when Eric July showed he was going to be a more consistent success uh, than Ethan's books, that it broke Ethan, that uh, he couldn't handle it. He was supposed to be the king of independent comics. Uh, that's why he called it Comics Gate Kings. He would anoint people who he's going to build up uh, and get, get them 100K or whatever. And uh, and that's that's what he did. I mean, he brought people who like like uh, not not, you know, a lot of them did deserve it. Graham Nolan's a great artist, but Graham Nolan was struggling to reach 25, 30 K with his books uh, before he got on that Comic Skate King show. Ethan brought him up to 100 and got him a fan base, basically. Uh, and now Graham Nolan should have had a fan base, to be fair. Uh, but it, he didn't. And that's just kind of how it was. And so he had the power to do that. He had a comic loving audience to do that for a long time. That comic on loving audience really isn't there anymore. It's evaporated, and it's because of his own behavior. It's because of his attacks on creators who are walking the walk and doing what they're doing, like Eric July, like myself, uh, who are coming out with books regularly, actually being the competitors to Marvel and DC, focusing on the culture war. Uh, it's something he can't handle. And so uh, if you look at his latest effort, it only got about 30-something thousand, and that's all he could do. He made full videos about it, like not even just live streams. Like he really pushed it as hard as he possibly could, and that's the only juice he has left. He knows that that's a very scary thing, and that's not enough to move the needle to get a lot of these mainstream pros who he used to surround himself with to give himself a little credence to keep coming back. And so he's on the verge of losing all of that, on the verge of losing any of his credibility because he's just— gone full tilt with dick masterson at this point to like be a, a troll brigade trying to uh go at eric july and the like and it's really really sad to watch so you see uh the commentary here i just can't understand what broke in your brain this is incredibly sad to see how far you've fallen lmfao he says i get it brother you pretend like you're laughing publicly while you're crying to yourself and that's true your fall from grace has been biblical now this is pretty interesting how he says i used to work with i used to work with grant morrison and jeff johns now I have to interact with scum like John Delarose and Matt Barr. That was the fall from grace. So let's look at this uh, and uh, and unpack this right here. His fall from grace was not working with Grant Morrison and Jeff Johns anymore. He used to be with brilliant people. They shunned him. They cast him from their table. Oh, woe is me. It reminds me of like Napoleon Dynamite. You remember the guy like Uncle Rico in there where he's, you know, you know he's, he's throwing the football around at like 50 years old being like, I could have gone state if they would have just seen my talent. Uh, and that's exactly what this seems like. Uh, in in uh, the sociosexual hierarchy, we call this a gamma male rant. Uh, people should have seen how brilliant he was. Jeff Johns and Grant Morrison should have respected him more. If you ever listen to him, Grant Morrison didn't even want him on the book as a fill-in artist. He, he was like, please don't do this. And of course, uh, Ethan eventually got uh, knocked off Green Lantern because he was so slow that he couldn't get things done. That's why Ivan Reese was uh, the one who uh, actually did most of the work over there on that run. And so uh, now he's uh, now he's mad because, uh, you know, the, we're the writers and, and artists that he's around. Now, of course, Matt Barr does beautiful work and actually uh, it came out with a great book in in, uh, in his art for, for Rock and Roll Ninja and is doing a lot more. He actually Ethan actually hired Matt Barr to actually do art for him. Uh, that's how much he, he knows Matt Barr is a great artist. Uh, and myself, of course, like I've been crushing it. I have great reviews winning awards for my comic books, uh, all while uh, Ethan's kind of just like uh, losing his audience one by one. So, uh, But his fall from grace really is just the fact that he's not part of the mainstream industry anymore. And we're against the mainstream industry here. So why are you all for that? That's what he wants. He like wishes he was part of them. He, he, he feels like he should have been part of them. He should, feels like he should have been recognized one of them. He identifies more with like the leftists and the SJWs than he does with us. He calls us scum for wanting to fight against that. And it's because it's a cloud structure. And he knows that that cloud structure of like, I was a comic artist who worked at Marvel in DC, and that makes me the real deal. Uh, that uh, sort of cloud structure is failing at this point because everybody's looking at it going, wait a minute, we hate Marvel in DC. How does that actually give you any sort of, uh, you know, accolades or anything? Like you you just like were drawing Green Lantern's dick for like, uh, you know, 10 years. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not like you were creating anything. You were just copying other people's work. And that's exactly what Marvel and DC is. It's just a big fan fiction place. But corporations try to make it like into something that that's what the comic industry is all about. And that's why we're fighting them. The corporations are evil. They've actually stifled creativity. They've been living off of a bunch of dead guys' works for decades. And it's really sad. There's no creativity there. There's no talent there. It's quite the opposite. That's exactly why we're here. And that's exactly why we're growing. 
And, uh, you know, it, he knows the jig's up. He knows that that sort of system's failing. Uh, he's lamenting it. He's saying that's the fall from grace. Uh, and he wishes he could have those glory days back, but they're never coming back. The new generation's here. We're doing better. We're doing more awesome. And we're making real creative projects. All right. <laughs> the result is as he's talking smack about me, even still, he's going off on Twitter. Uh, can't take any pushback whatsoever. He's about the most thin-skinned weasel out there. Very, very funny. Uh, and guess what? Uh, can't take any criticism. As much as he goes at Eric July for saying he can't take criticism, womp, womp. <laughs> All right, another W for us over here as we roll right along. This is the Hidden Emperor, guys. One day left. Please uh, not only back this, but share this out. Like Word of mouth is everything. When customers and readers talk about these books, it means a lot. It, people see this. It helps. We can push this to 50K over the next day. Uh, I really appreciate you for making this such a tremendous success so far, guys. And that link's in the description below. Back it all. Back the complete JDA library. Grab grab all my books. I've, I've got a bunch. They're all fast-paced. Uh, I would love for you to read all of them uh, and get in on my multiple universes here as we keep building the real alternative. Thank you so much for the support. We'll be back soon. <laughs>